They are the oldest objects in the universe, but nobody has ever seen them until relatively recently. Embracing them is lethally dangerous as they can stretch you like chewing gum and rip your insides apart. Directors make movies about them and scientists add fuel to heated arguments that try to explain their origins. Some people say they are portals to different dimensions, while others claim they are the beginning and the end of literally everything. They are the most mysterious things in the universe. Black Holes. But first things first, this photo was published in 2019 and it became a big deal and an incredible breakthrough in studying the phenomenon. The first real photo of a black hole. This is one of the biggest black holes located in the Messier 87 galaxy in the constellation of Virgo, 6.5 billion times heavier than the sun. To take this picture, scientists created a network of eight radio telescopes that they installed on different continents. It took them five days to get the photo and as long as two years to decipher the information it held. This was the first visual proof of the existence of black holes. Then how could we have known about them before if nobody had ever seen one? That's quite a reasonable question to ask. The thing is, many observations in space prove the existence of tiny objects that have large masses and don't emit light. They can be detected due to their gravitational pulls, such as from other stars or interstellar clouds moving around them. What's more, scientists have found out that black holes make certain sounds. Not so long ago, NASA shared a recording with the world. Here, take a listen. According to one definition, a black hole is a region of space where gravity is so strong that it sucks up everything around it, including light. This means that even photons can't get beyond the bounds of this gravity. That's precisely why a black hole cannot be seen. Those bright orange spots that you see in the picture are flaming gas that glows along the hole's edges. Now, let's get a more profound understanding of what this black hole consists of. According to some scientists, there's a singularity inside and in the center of a black hole, and its outer surface is called the event horizon. It's a spherical boundary that balances the strength of the gravitational field and the intensity of the light that is desperately trying to leave the black hole and fails to do so. If the event horizon is crossed, there's no going back. This means that any body or object will disappear after moving past this boundary. But we remember the law of conservation of energy, don't we? Energy can't appear out of nowhere or disappear into nothingness. So what will happen to a body after it gets trapped in a black hole? First of all, I should mention that any substance will contract and approach infinite density when it's in this region of space. Meanwhile, time and space get distorted to such an extent that they just cease to exist. Simply put, if one day you decide to find out for yourself what's hidden inside a black hole and reach the singularity I've just told you about, your body will start experiencing patchy tidal forces. The closer you come to the event horizon, the greater the effect will be your body will be stretched in a radial direction and compressed tangentially. Figuratively speaking, your body will be stretched as if it's made of natural rubber. This process is called spaghettification. It happens when the force of gravity that influences an object approaching a black hole rapidly increases. This effect is so visible that if you fall down a black hole legs first, your legs will get elongated way more than your head and will be pulled until they look like a long human noodle. By the way, astronomers recently spotted a star that was spaghettified by a massive black hole. When the star approached, it was captured by the gravity and sucked up by the huge hole, which is located 750 million light years away from Earth and has a mass of 30 million times that of the sun. When pulling the star inside, the gravity of the black hole produced strong tidal forces and stretched the star into a long strand like spaghetti while creating a bright flash of optical light and radio waves. 
telescopes on Earth detected this phenomenon, and this is what it looked like. As for temporal distortion, it works the following way. The faster an object moves, the slower time around it flows in the eyes of the observer. And when it gets into a black hole, the object starts moving at a tremendous speed. So time in this region slows down so much that it nearly stops. In other words, if you get into a black hole, you'll think that everything is happening in the blink of an eye. But to me, watching from a safe distance, the whole process will seem incredibly sluggish. This is what temporal distortion is like. And this is where the fun begins. If you're one tough cookie and that black hole doesn't simply pull you to pieces, what will happen to you next? Some researchers believe you'll be ejected from it into another universe through a so-called white hole, which is characterized by the opposite qualities. Instead of pulling objects inside, it pushes them out. Well, it's only logical that if there are black holes, there should also be white ones somewhere. Given the theory of relativity, scientists see a white hole as a wormhole, also called an Einstein-Rosen bridge. This is a tunnel that can take you to a different point in time or even to a different universe. This implies that a black hole should be hollow inside and its mass should be concentrated at the center. Scientists from the Ohio State University didn't find this theory plausible and started their own research. And they arrived at the conclusion that black holes are, in fact, giant fuzzballs and not tunnels. Here's how Samir Mathur, a professor of physics at the university and the initiator of the study, explains it. The black hole tries to squeeze things to a point, but then the particles get stretched into these strings and the strings start to stretch and expand. And it becomes this fuzzball that expands to fill up the entirety of the black hole. The researchers claim that this fuzzball theory remains the most probable solution to the black hole information paradox presented by Stephen Hawkins. According to his calculations, black holes should emit elementary particles and eventually evaporate. However, this violates the core precepts of quantum mechanics. This violation is called the information paradox. And while you and I try to figure out this cosmic mystery, meanwhile, astronomers manage to catch a unique phenomenon that may be the birth of a black hole. The scientific world generally believes that black holes emerge after the collapse of a dying star that weighs 40 to 50 times more than the sun. One hypothesis says that black holes can form when a collapsing star ejects matter, which happens at high speed. When jets collide with the falling matter, the black hole may be showered with high energy flashes. Astronomers spotted two explosions of an unknown type that must have occurred due to a collision between fast moving matter and cosmic gas surrounding it. As soon as the contact between the matter and the ambient gas broke, the light source immediately disappeared. This means that supermassive stars, in this case, Wolf Riot ones, collided and merged into a black hole. And that's what usually happens when a star collapses and ejects only a small part of the matter. By the way, our sun won't be able to turn into a black hole after it dies, as it's not heavy enough to do that. But in theory, any object or body can be turned into a black hole if we compress it to a super small volume, but keep its proportions. For example, if we turned our Earth into a black hole, it would be around 18 millimeters in diameter. Luckily enough, this kind of technology hasn't been invented yet. Though scientists have been earnestly trying to create artificial black holes for quite a long time. And that's understandable, as they can become an inexhaustible energy source. Scholars at the Israel Institute of Technology have developed an audio replica of a black hole in a laboratory setting. It consisted of 800 rubidium atoms and had a length of 0.1 millimeter. Atoms moved faster than the speed of sound, and because of that, sound waves couldn't escape beyond the object. Meanwhile, gas was slowly flowing on the outside, letting sound waves move freely. Scientists discovered that their replica of a black hole produced two sound waves, and they also determined the exact ratio between them. To get this, they repeated the experiment 97,000 times over 124 days. Astrophysicists, in turn, claim that they have gone even further and now know how to get into a black hole. 
There's some minor tasks to undertake, though. First, we need to find a way to travel supergiant distances and detect an isolated supermassive black hole. As according to research, this is the only kind of star suitable for a mission of this sort. Then, we need to build a starship able to reach it, assemble a crew, and send it on a mission through the event horizon. Yet, there's one funny thing. This expedition is by and large pointless, since as we know, it's absolutely impossible to either get out of a black hole or send any message from there. So all that work of all those astrophysicists is barely more than theoretical assumptions, and it's highly unlikely to be put into practice in the foreseeable future. Or is it? <laughs>